Recording? Is that it? Yep, it's recording. Good. Okay, good. Very good. All right. Hi. <laughs> Learning Hello. something new every day. <laughs> All righty. Hi, guys. Welcome to another episode of the Happy Even After podcast. I am here with Jackie Brubaker today, and she is a podcast host in her own right of the That Girl, the podcast, and she's an author of the book uh, by the same title, That Girl, and she's also a life coach. So welcome. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. All right. So I want to first talk about your book because I'm a writer too. And I think that's like how I initially saw you on social media is I was like, oh, another writer and she has a podcast. So your book is a romantic comedy, right? Mm -hmm. So when did it come out? And give me a little like little the back cover uh, description (laughs) of what it's about. Perfect. I will give you the elevator pitch. Um, it came out in November on 11-11. <laughs> I chose 11-11 on purpose. Um, it is a semi-autobiographical account of my career as a makeup artist in TV and also my career as a songwriter in the music industry. It is fiction, but there are a lot of things taken from real life events Um the most important thing is that it's not me. I'm not that girl. <laughs> um, she actually has no name and no physical description on purpose because I wanted the reader to actually think that they could be her, even if they were a man or a woman. Like, honestly, I she is technically a girl, but she has no description. So you could really be like, I feel very connected to her and I, I, mm-hmm. I feel like I've been through that. So I did that on purpose because I really wanted people to, to just, you know, imagine. So, but it's very funny and it's very heartfelt and it's truly a coming of age story that arcs from rock bottom to, you know, getting your stuff together. <laughs> we, we've all been there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, I actually started writing it, um, at the end of my twenties, I think I was 29 and I wasn't even trying to write a book. I was just writing down notes at a job I hated. I was working on a show I just couldn't stand. I was so miserable. And my music career has had really been like kind of shifting. And I was like, oh, I'm just, I'm so miserable. And so I was certainly at a rock bottom kind of place. Like, how do I move forward? Where am I going? What do I do? Um, and ironically, that's very much about what I coach about is helping people take away the excuses so that they can actually go and live their passion. And showing them how to do that instead of just like, go live your passion, just be you. It's like, okay, well, how do I do that exactly? Mm. All right. So then that's a great question is it, we're in a pandemic and life as we know it has changed. People have been forced to find new jobs or maybe they've lost their job um, or maybe they just realize they hate their job. So Mm -hmm. what is the first step for someone to go find something that they're passionate about? I think it's really good to kind of go back to when you were a kid and remember what you like to do. Just think about what was interesting to you and then just start trying it. Even if it's as simple as like, I really liked drawing as a kid and then get an adult coloring book and try coloring or drawing or sketching something, really kind of going back into that child-like place and sort of uncovering what made you happy. And then going from there and seeing, or, you know, maybe you have hobbies that you've always wanted to try that you might be able to do. Like, I I don't know why I just thought of horseback riding, but probably because I like horseback riding, but you know, (laughs) what if it's horseback riding and you're like, Oh, I always wanted to take lessons as a kid. I never did. Um, that may be available to do now. It may not be, but it's worth kind of just like taking those first steps of Googling something like how do, what about a class or, just something to kind of get you in the right direction Mm -hmm. to see if you even like it and then moving from there. So do you ever recommend someone just quit the job and figure it out (laughs) after or is it strategic? (laughs) That is such a good question. So um, <clears throat> my, um, <laughs> my, my answer is no, please don't do that. So I have a lot of reasons why, um, <clears throat> so Oprah said something really profound when I was a kid, I was watching Oprah and she did this, hold on, I'm going to stop my, I feel like my voice is getting like super like, bleh, so hold that's on. okay. <laughs> Just edit this out. No problem. <laughs> mm. 
<laughs> I put you in the hot seat now. I know, my <laughs> I voice is like, around. that's it, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. Um, so Oprah said in this amazing episode, she had all of these entrepreneurs who were like, I want to start this business. It was like Shark Tank before Shark Tank. And she chose this guy after, you know, all of the hundreds or thousands of people that applied. She chose this man who had a family who never quit his day job and he did his passion project or his small business on the side in the hours that he could do it on the weekends, at nights, in the mornings, anytime he could. And he still took care of his family and he still took care of himself. Even if he didn't have a family, he still took care of himself. And to me, and that's why she chose him. She's like, because you didn't just throw it all away and say, you know what? I'm just going to sink or swim. And it's like, okay, let's see what happens. And most times it's not pretty. But what's interesting with a pandemic is that so many people have had their jobs taken away, have had their lives completely turned upside down. And so it is a sink or swim kind of moment. And it's a really good time to actually do something that you've always wanted to do because what are you going to lose? <laughs> I know, right? You know? So yeah, and I do not recommend people quitting their jobs though. So. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> but, and we, we spoke about this before we started recording this episode is that um, th- there you have nothing to lose and that rejection um, could be redirection into something hmm better. And, you know, rejection could be an opportunity to really like the universe send what you're actually supposed to be doing your way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how did you start your podcast? Like what's your journey in your story there? Well, it's also very new. I mean, the book, the podcast, everything came out on 11, 11, 2020, (laughs) but, um, so I had written this book. I had an agent, I had had a manager, um, at different times and, they just weren't the right fit. And it's very hard to get an agent as a writer. It's also very hard to get a manager. And I had a really great opportunity with both. But it, the first time with the agent, it was just, I wasn't ready to finish the book. I actually ended up writing the book over again. Mm-hmm. I kept parts that were important and I wrote the story over again at a later time because I had finally come to the other side and could actually write the ending the way that it should be. You know, if you're, if you're at rock bottom, yeah. you're not really writing the ending that you should. So then I had a manager at that point and it just wasn't a good fit. And I just thought, you know, if I ever get another agent, that'd be great. But you know, and I, I queried, but I just kind of felt like, well, you know, maybe when the time is right, I'll just self publish. And as all really good ideas, I think when they come to you, they're not just like, boom, they're like subtle, very subtle. Mm -hmm. Like, why don't you publish your book? You know, I mean, why not? And I was like, yeah, that's a really good idea. I think I'm gonna. And then really shortly thereafter, like maybe in the same week, I was like, maybe I'll make a podcast of this because I couldn't. And and I probably just don't know of these podcasts, but I never really heard of a podcast where each week a chapter was read and then people were discussing the chapter along with their lives. And I thought, what a great way to connect with people and have the book read to you. If you didn't want to buy the book, you could just listen to it every week and get hooked like a TV show, which is Mm. where I come from. So (laughs) I was just thinking in like TV show episodes. But, and then I, of course, there's a YouTube that goes with it too, because it's like, why not? I mean, you're doing all of it. Like just do everything. (laughs) Was that November 11th too? Mm -hmm. (laughs) It all came out. It was a busy summer. Yeah. (laughs) But the thing that. that was not planned and was also, again, just kind of coming very subtly was coaching. I had wanted to get into coaching, but I that's not true. I actually just really wanted to get into motivational speaking. Mm. I really saw myself speaking on stage to a lot of people and doing that. Um, but I still didn't really know what my niche was going to be. I was really like, I don't, it's not time yet. It's just not time. And I had always wanted to be a marriage and family therapist since college. Like I was in college and I'm like, I want to be this, but I also knew that it wasn't time And I actually kept going back to school and then 
weird technical things would happen or weird occurrences in my life would happen that would just make me think, oh, maybe this isn't the right path. Like, I really want to be a therapist. I really want to help people, but I don't know why there's so much resistance. Like, I mean, stuff you couldn't even make up. You're like, how did that even happen? And I just thought, okay, well, maybe this isn't for me. And then honestly, in like that very subtle way, coaching just made sense because I want to work with people in a motivational kind of a way. I still want to deal with some therapy aspects of it, but I really want to work on goals. And that's what my whole business is about, which is exactly like the book. It goes from rock bottom, wanting to do something that you're not doing and then finding out how to do it. So if you read the book and then you work with me, you're, you're just going to be successful. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> and that's it. Stop. <laughs> that's it. Just, that's it. <laughs> you know what I love about what you just said though? And I, it, because you talked about writing and getting an agent and, and getting a manager, and those are all the things you're supposed to do. So when you're a writer, you're supposed to query, you're supposed to get the mm-hmm. agent. You're supposed, and what you just said is, you know what, I'm not going to do what I'm supposed to do in the traditional sense. I'm going to do what feels good to me and feels right. And what I want to do. And like, Mm -hmm. that's amazing to let that guide us rather than the, you should be doing this. Like you should, Mm -hmm. you should not separate from your agent. You should continue to do it that way. But that, you know, if you did that, your book would not be out there right now. It would not be Mm -hmm. read by people who needed it. Um, You probably wouldn't have the podcast. Like all of the things that you made happen was because you decided to go against what people told you you should do. And like, I think that that is such just, I mean, it's so much to take away from that just in terms of anyone making a decision when often we make decisions based on, well, what are we supposed to do? Like, you know, what, 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 what's shackling us Mm -hmm. to our, you know, our desk and not allowing us to go get our dreams because we're, we're stuck doing all of those things. Yes. And I absolutely am very traditional. Like I like doing things by the book. I liked having an agent and a manager. I felt like, oh, wow, this is so validating because it's happening the right way. And that I think is really crumbling in all ways right now. Like everyone's realizing, oh, I don't need someone's permission to do this. I can do this. And if I work hard at it, and do my best, you know, let's see what happens because you're an author. Um, so many people, you know, they're publishing just eats up all of their money. And then yeah. they're like, what's the point? Like, is anyone reading this? Am I getting anything off of this? Like, and in this case, I just, I really enjoyed having all of the control, not because I'm a control freak, but I was like, how nice for whatever happens in the future, this is mine. And I don't have to be like, can I do this, please? (laughs) You know? Yeah. I have heard or spoken to a lot of authors who have decided to not do the traditional publishing route who could do it. And Mm. um, one, for example, is Kara Alwell. She has Girl Code and she has... So... She her, is amazing. She's, yes. <laughs> I she, have I so do. much to say about her. Oh um, my gosh. So I was just interviewed for her podcast today as, as well. But so we had, she's an awesome human and she has, yeah. she's an awesome writer, but she had a traditional book deal. She wrote this book, self-published, mm-hmm. it blew up. And she then mm-hmm. did, had a traditional um, book deal, which was strategic. And then went back to self-publishing for the exact reason that you said. And yeah. it's like, it doesn't have to look the way that someone tells you or the it's supposed to look or the way it, the, it used to always be done. Like there's so yeah. much power in, in saying exactly that. Like, I'm no, this is my baby. I'm going to take control over it. I, I want it to come out into the world the way I want it. And because right. and for our listeners, when you, when a publisher buys your book, that's it. Like you don't have much say over anything, even from the Mm -hmm. title, like you lose Mm -hmm. all control over that. And so when you work on something that long, it's, it's hard to just let someone else take control of it. And then you're just kind of stuck with what gets put out there. And it's also very challenging for writers or artists in general, because when I was in music, I was signed to a publishing deal and I thought, oh my gosh, like this is it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be like the next 
Cara Diaguardi, who's a very famous songwriter. She's written like everything you've ever danced to ever. Mm -hmm. And I just, and I would actually like run into her quite often and be like, I just love you so much. And it was just, it was funny because I was such a fangirl and she's like, yeah, I know who you are. I'm like, oh my God. Anyway, (laughs) like I had that, the publishing deal and yet it, I ended up leaving that as well because I got swallowed up in the machine Mm. and no one was pushing me. And I was like, oh my gosh, you guys, this is my dream. Like all I want to do is write for other people. Like let me do that more. And they wouldn't. And I just thought, okay, I've really got to, and that's when I started writing this book (laughs) is really then. And it's just actually when I said earlier, um, giving yourself permission. That's from Girl on Fire, Kara's uh, latest book. And what's very interesting about that book is that it was in my Amazon cart for like months. And I didn't know who she was. I just thought, oh, this is a cool book. And the day after, or I had decided to finally just order the book a couple of days before my book launch. And then my book launch happened and it's very emotional, as you know, just Mm -hmm. all kinds of, all kinds of emotions. Some, I was like, why am I so sad? Why am I crying so much? (laughs) Like, why aren't I so happy? I just want to cry. Um, And her book showed up the next day. And I just read, oh my gosh, I think I just read the introduction or maybe the first chapter and was like, thank you so much. I needed this so badly because she was like a kindred spirit. And Mm -hmm. ever since then, and I just, it's funny too, I just ordered another one of her books and I didn't know it was her. Oh, and it's so style funny. my mind. It just came out. And I was like, oh, this is great for coaching. And then I looked at the author in the, in the cart. And I was like, oh, of course it's Kara. I just think she's remarkable. And she's the one who says, you know, you need to like, we're always looking for permission to do something. Yeah. And that just so mm-hmm. resonated with me. So. Yeah. I mean, and this goes straight to surrounding yourself with other people who inspire you and mm-hmm. elevate you. I mean, and that's because it pushes us to continue to think like that and think big mm-hmm. and not like not live small. So this Absolutely. conversation just went like from, from one point to the other, from life coaching <laughs> to like songwriting. And like, I totally want to put you on the spot and be like, can you sing a little bit? <laughs> but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I will not do that because that would not be Aww. fair. <laughs> Thank you. Especially because I'm a little like wonky in the in the voice department yeah. today. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're you're yeah. you're awesome. So what is next for you? So yeah, I just got certified as a life coach and that's really exciting. And it just felt so right. Like everything in my being was like, yay it's time. It's just time. Like there's nothing else. Like this is what we're here to do. And, um, I'm just excited to, you know, grow the business and just, just be coaching. And, and I love social media for this too, because I feel like it's a great way to, like we talked about, like connect with so many wonderful women, but also so many people who are like in need of some coaching and who are looking for some direction And I'm just happy to like give that and get them inspired. And then if they need real coaching, like take them on. And I mean, I, I would love to speak to huge audiences. Like Mm -hmm. I would love to do that when we can actually do that again. I know I, I would love to do stuff like that and that there will be courses and boot camps and all of the above. So (laughs) not tomorrow, but this year. (laughs) That's, that's amazing. Well, you're lighting up this, my screen. So you would probably light up a stage as well. Thank you. (laughs) So how do we find you? So, um, the Instagram is that girl, the podcast, um, the YouTube as well. Just put in that girl, the podcast. Um, the book is that girl, a novel, (laughs) (laughs) not the podcast, (laughs) not the podcast, not the novel, but now looking back, I'm like, I really should have made it the novel, but (laughs) That girl, a novel. Um, you can find me on my personal Instagram, which I absolutely love connecting with people on. It's just Jackie Brubaker. Um, I think that's it. And I'll put <laughs> I'll put all of those links in the show notes. So Jackie, thank, thank you, you so much. This has been thank such a so treat much. and we definitely have to con- connect again. Yes, absolutely. This has been so great. Thank you so much for, for having me.